Hello everyone and welcome to TV in the Balance. Today we're going to start looking at My Little Pony. Now let me just state that I love this show, but it does have its problems. Also, I'm going to answer a question right away. How can you review a kid's show, a cartoon, or a comedy? Well, in the case of My Little Pony and other shows of the genre, it does have a continuing narrative that goes from episode to episode. So, it is just like any other TV show at that point. But what about cartoon physics and absurd uh, premises? Every show has, at its core, a certain set of rules for that universe that it has to establish. So at that point, when you look at a show, you just have to look at it within the rules of its own universe. If it does something stupid in terms of even if its own self, then it's, you know, a, a flaw. If they pull something off within their little bubble that turns out to be really good, then it's a merit. Anyways, alright, so here we are. We're going to look at the very first half of the very first story of My Little Pony. Cow. Spike, the dragon, knows exactly where everything is and how it's sorted. This is going to be shown to us very quickly and become a main plot point later on. Don't you just wait 10 seconds for him to find what you're looking for, because you already know he knows where everything is. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen, a rude, impatient, inconsiderate cow that would be more than willing to hurt her friend than wait the whole two extra seconds it would take for him to walk to her. Got it! Great! Send it. Now? Of course. I don't know, Twilight. The way you send things is basically the equivalent of a text message, and this is the end of the world. How is this becoming an argument? Bonus point for scoring a hat-trick in a single scene. Celebration. And it's like the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow? Oh, you guys are boned. Everyone by now knows what happens the day after tomorrow. Well, let's hope that this time it's less of a disaster for the audience, at least. It's imperative that the princess is told right away. Impera? Impera? Important! I got a side of Twilight on this one. That was starting to wear real thin. <clears throat> My dearest, most faithful student, Twilight. You know that I value your diligence and that I trust you completely. Mm -hmm. But you simply must stop reading those dusty old books. <gasps> My dear Twilight. Did he start reading that letter? Pause. Insist they go on a carriage. Not tell her why. Then decide to continue finally reading it when they were already on their way. Why would she go with that? But it, on the other hand, if she already knew that she had to go there and why, then why is he rereading the letter? It's already information she knows. There is more to a young pony's life than studying. Like working. So sending you to supervise... Look on the bright side, Twilight. The princess arranged for you to stay in a library. Doesn't Nothing will ensure a bookaholic won't spend all their time yes. reading. Yes, like yes. having them you set up permanently in a library. A bit counterintuitive there, Celestia. Doesn't that make you happy? Yes. Yes, it does. You know why? Because I'm right. I'll it's good to see that no matter how bad things get, well, at least in her opinion, nothing can rattle her smug self-superiority. <laughs> Bonus point for scoring a hat-trick in a single scene. I am her student, and I'll do my royal duty. Any person's royal duty is to do what their monarch tells them. In this case, you were told to make friends. You're going to ignore that, which means you are specifically ignoring your royal duty. The fate of Equestria does not rest on me making friends. Well, actually, now that you mention it... Uh, hello? With everything she's said and done so far this episode, that is a very insightful reaction to meeting Twilight Sparkle. Who is Applejack posing for? There are no other apples around, and she didn't know Twilight Sparkle was there yet. Big Macintosh! <laughs> Let me help you. That's cute, funny, and awesome. I guess I overdid it. Um, uh, how about this? My very own patented rain blow. You also pulled up all that mud there, Dash, so Twilight should be filthy. The Wonderbolts? Yup. The most talented flyers in all of Equestria? 
That's them. <laughs> Please. They'd never accept a Pegasus who can't even keep the sky clear for one measly day. Hey, I could clear the sky in ten seconds flat. Prove it. I can't believe Rainbow's stiff enough to fall for this. But that does help define her character fairly well. What I say? Ten seconds flat. Emerald? What was I thinking? Let me get you some rubies! Quick, before she decides to dye my coat a new color! How dare that rarity try to give you a random outfit covered in jewels for free! Quickly, run away! Focus, Casanova. What's next on the list? I'm Twilight Sparkle. What's your name? Um, I'm Fluttershy. I'm sorry, what was that? Um, my name is Fluttershy. <laughs> this is just so cute. Well, that was easy. <gasps> A baby dragon! A preview of Fluttershy's bipolar madness to come. I may always score bonus points for random violence against Twilight. Bonus point for scoring a hat trick in a single scene. I didn't know dragons could talk. That's just Until you realize that Fluttershy is talking to herself while talking at them, all the pronouns in this sentence make it confusing. Wait, wait, what's his name? And that's the story of my whole entire life. You know, not that much time has passed. Your life has kind of sucked. Yes, please. <sighs> I love you, Fluttershy, but you're really slipping into irritating territory now. I support what Twilight Sparkle's doing here because, honestly, Spike's just feeding the madness now. He's so sweepy he can't even keep his widow balanced. Poor thing. You simply must get him to bed. Yes, yes. We'll get right on that. Well, good night. Huh. Rude much. Test audience notes become script. But I have to convince the princess that Nightmare Moon is coming and we're running out of time. I just need to be alone so I can study without a bunch of crazy ponies trying to make friends all the time. Now, where's the light? Awkward. Twilight ditches her own welcome party. Uh. Legend has it that on the longest day of the thousandth year, the stars will aid in her escape, and she will bring about everlasting night. I hope the princess was right. I hope it really is just an old pony tale. You know, the princess actually hasn't made any commentary on the level of threat yet. She's just... Apparently ignoring it. Isn't this exciting? Are you excited? Because I'm excited. I've never been so excited. Well, except for the time that I saw you walking into town and I went... Unfortunately, I couldn't find any Joker, Mad Hatter, or Jack Nicholson clips that were as manic as Pinky is being in this scene. For that, I apologize. Phillies and gentle calls. Oh, oh no. Nightmare Moon. This scene. Oh, my beloved subjects. It's been so long since I've seen your precious little sun-loving faces. So that's the end of part one. I won't be doing a final score until the end of part two, but right now things don't look so good, do they? Don't worry, though. The others get to their moments to shine in the second half, so things will only go up from here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Also, don't forget to join us on Facebook and Twitter. Links will be in the description box. And to fulfill the Canadian Copyright Act, I would like to state that My Little Pony belongs to Hasbro, as well as DHX Media and Studio B. See you next time. You're the Mare in the Moon. Nightmare Moon.